my goodness, well, Lauren Bober, you know, Miss Handjob, uh, she is a handy, handy Bober, yes, uh, she's claiming that it's the uniparty that the Republicans and the Democrats are all out to get her, okay, they're all out to get me. So I'm going to pull cards and we're going to look and see what the cards have to say. Let me give these a good ruffle shuffle here. And I'm going to pull the cards here real quick first. Okay. we go so let's see what we have in the center of it we have oh yes she is feeling stressed she's on the edge she's feeling that she is just being um you know uh hit from both sides underneath of it all she's having sleepless nights the mental Spin is going with her. So let's see what we have at the foundation. The center of the foundation shows she's coming out with her message about, you know, that they're, they're all after me. It's all a conspiracy. <laughs> so going into it, yes, we have the Democrats. And on the other side, what's being birthed, you know. But part of this is, is democracy, the laws, the rules, the regulations. She does not like that, um, you know, this Republican is quitting and they're going to have another, um, what, another election that's coming up. So she sees all of this as, you know, what she's putting out there, her message, that it's all unfair. The rules, the laws of democracy are unfair, unfair to her. <laughs> she's being so abused by this. So let's see what's above it. Oh, yeah, she wants to get to an easier place. So she is coming out with this action and the poor me saga, cry me a river of tears. And so she's hoping this will get her to a better place to cry foul that they're all doing this to me. Again, so unfair. They're all against me. So going into it, we have her the takeaway that what she's trying to get away with and that what she's working on now. Okay, the challenge is her actions going forward, okay, and the outcome, let's see what the outcome card is, all facing loss, yeah, so she's facing loss, really unhappy with it, again, let's go through it real quick, she's feeling pushed, stressed, on edge, nightmare scenario, you know, her carpet bagger thing is not working for her, apparently. So she's got the message out there that democracy and the rules, you know, shouldn't apply to her. That this, this is so unfair. These rules are unfair to her. Of course, above it, she wants to get to calmer waters. So she's carrying the cudgel and out there playing boo-hoo, boo-hoo cry me a river of tears. So what's going on now? Again, she's working on the challenge is the way forward, the next action. But going into it, you know, she's tried to get away with this. 
And the takeaway is, in the end, she is facing loss. So, yeah. Old Handy Bobert oh, there, over there is singing the blues that it's so unfair. They're all against her. It's all an ugly pop by the Uniparty. By <laughs> that these are not MAGA people. You know, they're actual Republicans and Democrats, and it's unfair. Uh, and so <laughs> she's absolutely singing the blues. Now, let's go ahead. We're going to get the Lenormand. Let me go ahead and do, do this, and we'll just see, you know, ask a couple questions. So how is this working for Bo Burr? Uh, divergent path, you know, she she's going to pick a different way to go, okay? And so what's going to be the outcome for her uh, short-term success? Now, she had short-term success where she was at, but now it's going out the door. And I like that it's, you know, coming up, you know, <laughs> St. Patty's Day, the 17th. You know, everything is in crash and burn mode. So what will she do if she loses? Okay, what's going to happen if she loses? You know, she's going to have to turn her back on it and go forward. Okay, uh, you're not welcome anymore. Okay, Bober, you're up there, you know, again, talking about her wanton killings up there in church. <laughs> Oh, these MAGA people, you know, they want to get up there and preach and and they they don't know the difference between wanton killings. I guess, I guess you know, it's a, a plot by all the Chinese restaurants. Yes. Way back in the day, they had this plot for the wanton killings. <laughs> you know, you would think you would be at least intelligent enough to try to talk on something that you could actually understand what it's saying, okay? Yeah, wanton killings, just, you know, out of the blue, you know. <laughs> but wanton killings, you know, those Chinese, uh, you know, it's all about the immigrants. Way back when, when they first had Chinese things coming in, they had the wanton killings. It was a big plot that was happening. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be involved in the wanton killings. <laughs> yes, she's the one that, you know, talks about family values and she's uh, raised her kid to where she's got grandchildren now. He's just been, got what, 22 charges? Yeah, yeah. Good family values out there at, uh, you know, playing handsy checking the fruit basket out there, yeah, in the middle of the thing, um, just, uh, yeah, yeah. Why is it it's always these maggots that are trying to preach the Bible and they don't know what's in it, okay? Or they're, you know, talking about uh, that they are so... And it's always the ones, too, that are transphobic, etc., that are so LGBTQ against all of them, wind up being closet gay or closet, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it's just, uh, you look at this and, and you're going, what in the world Talk about, you know, the absolute denial. Now, one of my favorite ones was when the, this guy is out there. And I forget what they call these guys, but intelligent. And they're talking about these MAGA people that, oh, we need to have the Bible. We need to have the Bible in school. The children need to be taught the Bible in school. 
And he goes, well, you, you know, there are some books you think should not be in school. And they go, yes, they shouldn't be in school. You know, the ones with kind of pornographic stuff. Yes, we need to get them out. We need to get the Bible in school. He goes, well, what about the a book that has a story about these daughters to get their dad drunk and they go in and have sex with him? Oh, my God, the devil's work. The devil's work. Well, that's the Bible. <laughs> That's, that's in the Bible, okay? And there are numerous, numerous things of this nature in there. And so they're screaming that the Bible is the word of God, you know. And, uh, you know, look what happened with Abraham, okay? Abram became Abraham and his wife, Sarai that became Sarah and uh, she sends her handmaiden in to get pregnant by her husband because she couldn't have children and then uh, when the handmaiden gets pregnant then next thing you know of course his wife pops up pregnant and he has her send the handmaiden out in the desert and they became the Muslims okay <laughs> family feud going for centuries but yeah, you want to talk about being so upstanding, you get her pregnant, and then you send her out in the desert because your wife is jealous. Yeah, another good family values in in the, <laughs> in the Bible. <laughs> and it's always that they go to the Old Testament to prove you know, their their thing. Anything that, of course, Yeshua ben Joseph, which they want to call Jesus, <laughs> anything that he said is too woke. We can't listen to that guy. We want the letter of the law. We don't want the spirit of it. We don't want the, you know, higher elevated thing. We want the letter of the law. We have the Old Testament. And, well, no, that's the basically the Jewish history Okay, but then again, you know, some of them are very anti-Jew, and then other ones are the Jewish can do no wrong. Israel can do no wrong. So again, you have so much of this convoluted craziness that's going on out there. And, uh, you know, they, they love the Old Testament when it comes to browbeating people. But when it comes to things like the dietary things, which are part of that for, you know, you, you can't have milk and meat together. You can't have that. You know, this dish is half. You know, if you understand, uh, um, especially Orthodox Jewish, very, um, it's very, how do I want to say it? Um, they have absolutely strict parameters about what you can eat, what you can't eat, when you can eat it. You have to have separate dishes for this, separate dishes for that. Some of them even have two different dishwashers because you can't have these together, you know. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. You you can't you can't turn on a light or anything after the Sabbath, when the Sabbath begins. Now, you can have a Goyim come in and do it for you because that's, you know, they, they've got all the loopholes that they try to find. I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> the loopholes are amazing, okay? But again, you know, this kind of... Uh, when you really look at it and what's there, if you understand what's in there, what they love to pick and choose, the things that they can beat people over the head with and claim that they are the righteous ones. But they're such hypocrites that it's beyond. It, 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 you know, it, what they're talking about is anathema to what Yeshua ben Joseph uh, came here to to give humanity, okay? Anathema, just absolutely the opposite of what he came to give. So anyway, we went from Bobert over to Yeshua ben Joseph, 
orthodoxy, etc. <laughs> it's amazing how all of these things just kind of... <laughs> anyway, on that note, I'll leave that here, and we'll see you online.